Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mrs. Patterson and Mrs. Felix, and we are coming at you live from Teleschool. This is week seven, day one, and let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna kick off our day with our Pledge of Success. Just have our minds right and let everyone know and let ourselves know, I'm here, I'm focused, I'm ready to learn, and I am going to be successful. So if you will either join me or repeat after me, I will be the rose that grew from the concrete, able to stand on my own feet. I am proud of who I am and confident in who I'll be. If I'm focused, I will achieve anything that I can dream. Look out, world, because once I've started, there is nothing stopping me. Wonderful. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. This is English Language Arts, also known as ELA. This week, our goal is to focus on learning target or standard ELA GSE 4RL5. What that means is our goal this week is to explain the major differences between poems, drama, and prose, and refer to structural elements of poems, such as verse, rhythm, meter, and dramas. We're talking about cast of characters, settings, descriptions, dialogue, stage directions, when writing or speaking about a text. So if you are staying on track, you'll know that last week we spent most of our time talking about poems, and we learned what a verse is, a rhythm, a meter, a stanza, and a rhyme all were. We have broken up this standard of ELA GSE 4 RL5 into two different weeks to make sure that you all are fully grasping the concepts. So last week we focused on poems. This week we are focusing on dramas and what they are. So by the end of this week we are going to proudly say I can explain the elements of plays and determine their purpose. So you're going to know what a cast of characters is, fully understand what a setting is, what descriptions are, dialogue, stage direction, and more. So if you'll please join me, go ahead and open up today's Nearpod. We are working on Monday, May 4th, 2020. So our goal for today and then our agenda is to watch this YouTube video. So thank you. You've already started doing that. Great job. You're then going to read a story called The Surly Chefs on page 312 in your packet. It's also in this Nearpod. You're going to complete the graphic organizer that's on page 313. I'm going to help you guys out with that as well. And then finish off by answering the exit ticket that's on Google Forms. It'll pop up as you continue through our Nearpod. Finally, like we do every single day, you need to do one iReady reading lesson. We got to make sure we're getting that time on that personalized iReady reading lesson. So join me, please, as we go along. First thing we want to look at, we have an anchor chart here that says, what is drama? What is drama? So in this lesson this week, you all will be learning about different elements of a play and exploring how they work together to make the play interesting and meaningful to a audience. So a drama are di or dramas are different stories that can be acted out in front of people or in audience. So another word for a drama, a synonym is a play. You also, your closest reference to a drama or a play is probably any type of movie that you've seen with live human actors. So the difference between a movie and a drama or a play is that movies are recorded. You can take the time to edit them and make corrections if any mistakes happen. But a play is happening live. It's right there on the scene. And so with the play, there are different structural elements that come along with them. So all this week, we are learning about the different elements of a drama or a play. Some of those elements include acts, also known as scenes, and these are the parts of the play that is, it is divided into. We also have characters. Those are the people who are in the play. We have a narrator, the person that tells the story. That's not always in... Um, a play, but sometimes we have them. We also see those sometimes in stories, the person who is telling our story. And then we have the setting, which is where and when our story takes place. We've talked about that a lot this year, so you should feel very comfortable knowing what a setting is. And we have dialogue, which is whenever two or more characters are having a conversation. Um, stage direction tells the character what to do and a script, which is the text in the play. So even though that was just a brief overview, we're gonna dive more in depth with it as we go along through our story. Um, so a drama, let's just first break down and make sure that we fully understand what a drama is. A drama, also known as a play, is a story that is acted out on a stage. So it's live, it's in front of an audience. There are actors that play the role of each of the different characters. 
They follow a script that tells them what to do and what they should be saying. The script also gives important details about the setting, which may change during the play. So where they are and when they are may change throughout the play. Just as there are different types of literature, just how we have different types of genre like historical fiction, science fiction, fantasy, there are also different types of plays or different types of drama. There are plays that are based on fairy tales, based on fables, as well as fantasy. There are also historical plays that are based on real life. So in this lesson, we're going to read several different plays, such as one called Where's My Mummy, which is a fantasy. We're going to read something called The Lightning Tantrum, which is based on a folktale. And then the final one you all are going to read independently is called The Endless Tale, which has elements of a fairy tale. So we're going to be going through that. But right now, I want you to really focus your, your mind and your eyes as well on page 312 in your packet or on this Nearpod as we read through our learning target. It says understanding the purpose of different parts of a play will help you develop ways to talk and to write about it. A drama or a play is meant to be performed on a stage for an audience. Actors learn their parts by reading from a script. So script is our first bold word so that we know what that is one of our academic talk words of this week. So a script is the written text. It's what those actors study and read to learn what to say during the play or during the drama. Special text features called structural elements tell the actors exactly what to do and say. So we're gonna see that in our play or drama example today called The Surly Chefs. And in there, we're gonna see different structural elements like dialogue, stage directions, the setting, and the cast of characters. So when you read a script, pay attention to all of these structural elements, not just the dialogue or the words that the characters speak. The cast of characters tells you who appears in the play and the setting tells where and when it takes place. The stage directions tell the actors how to act and speak or what should happen on stage. Descriptions give details about how the characters or setting look. These structural elements work together to help you understand what an audience will experience. So think about all of these different features or structural elements that are there. And our goal is to be able to identify them whenever we read a play, whenever we look at a play entirely. So with that, I want you to recognize that often stage director, directions, the cast of characters, and the setting details, they're usually going to be printed in the script in a different style of type to make them easier to find. So they will look different from the rest of the words. They will either be bolded, they might be italics, which means to have a lean to it or to be slightly slanted in font. And so all of those are to help them be easier to notice as you read through the play. So for the dialogue, as you'll see shortly, um, each of the characters' name is in capital letters, so it's easy to dis distinguish between who is speaking those lines and what he and she is supposed to say. You'll also know that the setting and the cast of characters are in italics as well, so they are slanted and leaning. So that's what I want you to look for as we read through this very brief example of the Surly Chefs. This very first part, it says the setting. So I'm gonna highlight it for you so that it's easier to see. So you'll see here that the setting is italics. It is slanted. So that's different from how the in the Surly Chefs is going straight up and down. This one is slightly leaning to the side and it's bold. So that lets you know that that is one of our structural elements of a play. The setting tells us where and when the story takes place. So here in the Surly Chefs, our story is taking place in 1932. So that's our when. And where it's located is a hotel kitchen. So we already have one of our details right there. The next one is our cast of characters. Our cast of characters tells us who the different characters in our play are. So once again, we see it's bold, it's italic size, and then each of their names have capital letters. So we're gonna have a character named the head chef. We're gonna have chef number two, chef number three, and then there's a hotel guest in this story. So after it's given us those details to let us know where we are and who is in this play, it then starts. So it tells you which character is speaking. Here it has in very bold letters, both are capitalized to let us know these are our characters. It says the head chef. 
in these brackets here, these are our stage directions, our stage directions that tell the actors how to act and how to speak and what they're going to say. So here our head chef is our very first character. And it says that our head chef is staring angrily at the hotel guests. So you can picture this in your head. You can actually visualize this and see this happening. The very first chef, the head chef, is staring angrily. So he's upset. And he's upset at the hotel guests. So now the words or the dialogue that are going to come out the mouth are as follows. It says, so you don't like our pies, do you? Maybe you'd like another taste, eh? And so he's talking directly to this hotel guest. And he's upset. He's like, oh, so you don't like the food that we have? Okay, maybe you want another taste. So then we have chefs two and three. Both of these actors are now looking angrily and upset. We know that because those stage directions are there in brackets. And so they both say, ready, set. And from our picture, it looks like they're about to throw these pies at our hotel guests. But we can confirm that with these different stage directions that are down here in brackets. And it lets us know that they say the three, sorry, going all off, the three throw their pies at the hotel guest. So we see right there that we have our stage directions in brackets. It tells us what they're doing. They're staring angrily at the hotel guests. They are looking angry and upset. They're actually throwing the pies at the hotel guests. We have the cast of characters. We know that there's a head chef. There's chef number two, chef number three, and a hotel guest are all on the stage at this time. We have our setting of where and when the story is taking place in 1932 at a hotel kitchen. And then we see the dialogue, the words that are actually being said. So now that we've walked through that, your task today is to complete this graphic organizer. It wants you to tell the purpose. Why do you think... We have to have a cast of characters. Why do you think they include that in the script? I want you to actually go ahead and think about that. What I would say is I believe that the purpose of the cast and characters is to list all of the characters, all of the characters who appear in the drama. So that cast of characters is telling you every single person that's going to be in that story. So it's important because you need to know, okay, if you're the one directing this play, how many characters are you going to need? How many actors do you have to have to really make this play come to life? So then what's the purpose of the setting? Why do we need to know where and when our story takes place? Well, it tells us where and when the drama is happening. But the other purpose behind that is you dress differently when you are in a different setting. You might have a different vehicle. If we had a story that was set in 3000, the year 3000, maybe we have flying cars and maybe all of our outfits are made out of plastic and they have like hoverboards and things like that. So your setting is going to also tell you where and when the story takes place, but also how your actors are going to have to dress and the different things you're going to need in the background to make it more realistic that you really either went back in time or forward in time. What's the purpose of the dialogue? Why do we have that? Why is that included in a drama or a play? I'll let you know. The dialogue tells exactly what the actors say on stage. Let's see, it also wants to know why do we have stage directions? Why do they tell you that those guys were staring angrily at the hotel guests? It didn't say, oh, they're just looking. It told you exactly how they were supposed to look. So I would say that stage directions tell, they tell the actors how to act or move and how they are feeling. And that's important because if, if it just said they stare at the hotel guests, you can't tell that they're upset and about to now attack this hotel guest with pies in the face. So those stage directions are hugely important. And then our last one is what are those descriptions for? Those descriptions give details about how 
the setting or the character looks. So I'm not typing as fast as I need to, but those stage directions give details about how the setting or characters look. It's your job to go back and fill in the examples.